Good evening, church. It's good to be with you tonight. I'm looking forward to worshiping the Lord with you tonight on our, our YouTube channel like this. If you are happen to just be tuning in, you can find all of our recent services over the last couple of months, Sunday mornings and Wednesday night devotionals on our YouTube channel, The Cornerstone Church of Baton Rouge. You can also go to our website and find out much more about our church, tccbr.org, The Cornerstone Church of Baton Rouge.org. Uh, but I'm glad, I just want to get right into it tonight. I pray you're doing well. I pray you're staying well and, and healthy. Thank the Lord for answering prayers. Many that we've been praying for, the Lord has touched and is healing them. And we're going to have our, our devotional here and then go into a time of prayer. <clears throat> and we'll continue this for the next uh, few Wednesday nights, probably. But I want you, if you would, to turn with me in your Bibles to James chapter 1. I just want to read two verses there and share with you uh, a little bit here tonight. So James chapter 1. Verse 19, I know uh, Eric has been doing a study on Wednesday nights for our men's group, men's Bible study on this book. It's been wonderful. It's a wonderful uh, teaching. And here we have two scriptures I want you to look at tonight. James 1, 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And so this is definitely written to Christians. The whole book, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is written by James, the, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus, who came to know the Lord uh, not until after Jesus died and rose again. And he is writing this epistle here to believers. That's where he says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren. And he says, Every one of the brothers, every Christian, <clears throat> every believer is to follow this command. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. That's funny because that's often just the exact opposite of our human nature. It's the exact opposite of, of how we behave. It's, it's ab absolute uh, opposite of how we would normally conduct ourselves. We would normally want to speak up. We would normally normally want to speak first, <clears throat> make sure that we're heard, make sure that our voice is heard. This is the way that man is. This is the way Christian men can be if we're not led by the Spirit. And so it's very important that we, we follow this admonition here. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, believers, okay, let every man be swift to hear. The first thing he says here is that we need to be swift to hear. That means to give audience, just like listen up but also means to understand. There's times, and I would say all the time, we need to listen. We don't need to listen to a fool. We don't need to listen to a blasphemer, blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ, but just in life, in, in circumstances in life, all walks of life, all areas of life, this is such good wisdom, and it is what we're instructed to do. It's one of the things that would set us apart as belonging to Jesus, that we're swift to hear. The first thing we do is we're going to give audience and we want to understand, even if we don't agree with what we're hearing. And this is godly wisdom. It's a godly and a wise trait or a, a characteristic. Be quick to listen, quick to hear. But then he says in the same verse, be slow to speak and be slow to wrath. And we're just going to talk about this a moment and tie it into to our times and the specific times we're going through now in our nation and in the world. But uh, slow to speak, okay? Quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to wrath. Wrath means anger. It means ind indignation. It means violent passion. So begin to picture that wrath is not just you're a little bit irked by something. Uh, this is a violent passion and indignation. Be slow to speak and slow to wrath. It has to do with vengeance. It has to do with, with getting even. It has to do with setting the record straight. And, and when I was looking at the definition here of wrath, it, it says even when it's justifiable. And that's very important. So be slow to speak and slow to wrath. Slow to vengeance or to get vengeance even when it's justifiable. In other words, even when we're totally in the right, 
and whatever we're hearing is totally wrong, whatever may be coming against us is totally false and wrong, we still, it doesn't say we, we never get angry, and it doesn't say we never speak. It says we're quick to hear, we're swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, even when it's justifiable. Oftentimes, like I said, we, we are exactly, our behavior and our first inclination is exact, exactly the opposite of that, especially when we feel justified in our anger or in our wrath. And I want to say this before we go any further. Certainly, absolutely, biblically, according to God's word, there are times when the believer is to get angry. Be angry and sin not. We should always be angry at sin. But it's how we deal with it, what God would have us to do with it. And so there, there are times when, when God would have us to speak up. There are times when God would have, have us to point out the truth. There are even times God would have us to defend ourselves. There are times when God would have us to point out injustice, something that's unbiblical, something that's incorrect, or maybe come to the defense of others and stop the uh, onslaught of words that are untrue. There are times, many times, God would have us to do that. We're simply saying in, in all of it, and what James is saying here, we need to be slow to speak, First, quick to listen, swift to listen, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. We must always be governed, and that's such a good word for that, governed by the Holy Ghost, even in our anger, not just in our kind words, not just in sharing the gospel with someone, not just giving wise or comforting counsel to, to someone that's hurting, but even in our anger and in moments where <clears throat> where. God would have us to be angry at sin. There are times to hold our peace. And, and just like Jesus did before Pilate, Jesus did not defend himself before Pilate. Jesus, and he could have. Jesus did not defend himself before Herod, after he left Pilate and went to Herod. Uh, he, he didn't just uh, blurt out all the things that were true and all the things how he was being uh, in, unjustly accused and so forth. So that's such a wonderful example. There are times to hold our peace. And there's great wisdom in knowing when to hold our peace, okay? Great wisdom to know when to speak. This is why we have to be led by the Spirit. We have to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And in order to do that, we first have to know that you're in Christ and born again. You have to be filled with the Spirit daily. There's not a lot of things we have to do every single day. But as a believer, that's one of the things we have to do. We have to be filled with the Spirit daily. So I want to read one more passage and then tie, tie this in as we go into our, our prayer meeting tonight. In John chapter 2, good example of this uh, where someone is slow to, swift to hear and, and slow to wrath, slow to, to uh, speak and slow to wrath is the Lord Jesus. And this is in all four gospels and I'm reading from John chapter 2 verse 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, and I know that you know this and you, you've heard this before, but it's important to see that he saw, he already knew before he went in what was taking place in the temple. This wasn't his first time to be in the temple in his lifetime in Jerusalem. But he, when he saw what was going on, and he already knew beforehand what was going on, he still took time to make a whip, to make a scourge, to put in his hand, to drive the, the money changers and so forth out of the temple. This is not the Lord Jesus losing it. He wasn't swift to, to vengeance, and he was perfectly justified. Now, the Lord Jesus was perfectly justified in what, what he did. But he took the time under the control and the lordship and, and the governing of the Holy Spirit. He says, and when he had made a scourge of small cords, then it says he drove them all out of the temple. And he was angry. He was angry at the sin. It wasn't a personal offense. He was angry at the sin, what they had done to his father's house. He drove out uh, all them of the, of the temple that sold the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money 
and overthrew the tables. So this were, these were violent acts. They were, uh, they were passionate acts in anger, but he was still wise and still led by the Lord, by the, by the Holy Spirit and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remember that it was written, the zeal of my, thine father, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. And so what are we saying here? What does this have to do with, with us right now? What does it have to do with the coronavirus and lockdown? Well, there's a lot of talk going on. There's a lot of things that, that if you watch the news from, or read the front headlines and listen to a talk show for literally for 15 seconds, that would make you angry. It doesn't take any time for us to know that's a lie. What the, what the commentator is speaking, what the, the, the interviewee is speaking, that's a lie. That is not the truth. That is not what's going on. And we want to set it straight. Now, certainly there are times God will have us to speak and set it straight. But we can't be overcome with some kind of anger. We can't become overcome with an anger that would cause us to want to, to get revenge to set things straight, and y'all, that kind of that anger, and I'm I'm close with this first. In, in this situation, we all know the conspiracy theories. Uh, we know enough, and and there's a lot of truth to con the conspiracy theories. I don't believe that they're all true. I don't believe that they're all false. I think much of what's spoken and how it relates to end times and one world government and control, uh, controlling populations and so forth. I do believe there's much truth. And, and a lot of the things that there were the conspiracies that we're hearing. But y'all, we cannot just take matters into our own hands. It will absolutely rob our peace. It will rob our joy from us. It will rob our testimony. Am I telling you not to get angry? No, it's not what I'm saying. We need to be swift to hear, hear what God has to say, hear what the word of God has to say, hear what godly people have to say, hear what somebody has to say, hear them out. If, if that's the, the, the case, but we need to retreat to the Lord. We need to be quick to hear what God has to say. He will certainly lead us in this day and in this hour, when to open our mouth, when to be quiet, when to, uh, to defend something or, or, or make our, the truth of God known and his word known. He would have us to, to know when to speak, and when to be quiet, he wants to lead us by his spirit. And so we're going we're gonna to need to retreat to the Lord and find our strength in him. And, and that's where in prayer, we're going to find that quiet confidence. We're going to find that quiet rest like Jesus had. He was angry at the sin, but he wasn't out of control. He didn't lose it. He didn't lose his temper. He was governed by the spirit of God and did every word, every action calculated in exactly what he was supposed to do at that moment. That's a perfect example for of what James is talking about there. And so we need to not get caught up. And y'all, I just warn you, we're not to be ignorant. I understand that of the conspiracy theories. But once we've heard them and we know in our heart of hearts, that's the truth. That's what's going on. A lot of what's being spoken uh, by the majority of the media and so forth is 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 false and we know that and we understand that we need to we need to step away from that or we are going to lose our minds okay we're going to go out of our minds and we're going to be angry we're going to be agitated and y'all we're going to be fearful we would be fearful but god wouldn't have us to be fearful he hasn't given us a spirit of fear but a power love and a sound mind we're going to find that quiet confidence in prayer and opening up the word of god and standing upon his sure promises for us. There's wisdom in, from God. There's wisdom in his word. There is an assurance and a peace that we receive from the Lord by retreating to him. He'll show us what to do. He'll show us when to speak. He'll show us what to say. And to, to, even greater than all that, he'll actually say it through us when it's time to do it. But in his presence, we're going to find the wisdom that we need for the hour. We're going to find the strength that we need, like Jesus had, to, to both be quiet, but like before Pilate, and to speak like he did 
in the temple on, and on other occasions. We're going to find that from the Lord. It's not within us in ourselves. It's from the Lord within us, amen, that he imparts to us. We're going to find that wisdom for the hour. We're going to find the peace of God. We're going to find the strength of God. And we're going to turn to him tonight, amen. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday and worshiping the Lord with you. But let's have this time now and go from this end of this devotional right into a time of prayer and calling upon the Lord. I encourage you to participate. I encourage you to, to pray via the group text. I encourage you to send scriptures via the group text and be part of what we're doing and be part of these, uh, these types of services online. Be part of it at the same time. We're all doing it corporately at the same time. Let's pray and seek the Lord tonight. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Oh God, what a lesson to learn. Let every man, every brother in Christ, every sister in Christ be swift to hear and be slow to speak and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Lord, if we just get in our flesh, even if we're correct, even if the words we say are true, that wrath, if we get into that vengeful type of attitude to want to set the world straight, is, is not working the righteousness of God. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Lord, you will have us to speak. You do have us to speak the truth in love, but we need to be governed by your spirit. And I pray you would strengthen us and quiet us and settle us and establish us tonight as we turn to you as we retreat to you and lord we're turning to you right now bless your people bless our prayer meeting tonight god have mercy upon our country lord we need you if we ever needed the lord like we sing we sure do need him now we need you now lord i pray you would put up on your people tonight a spirit of intercession by your spirit to call out to the living god Lord, if those that have been troubled, much troubled, I know there are people in our church that are troubled by this, troubled to the extent where they're, they're, they're just not having any peace or happiness. God, I pray that you would help us by faith to turn to you and give them your peace. Lift the burden. Lift the burden, God. Take it away. Take away the stress. Take away the worry. Take away the anger. We're mad at the lies. We're mad at the injustice. We're mad at the deception. We're mad at the devil. But God, we're going to fight those battles on our knees in prayer. Help us to do that, Lord. And as we do, would you lift the burden from off of us, God? And would you move, God? Not just help us to pray, but would you answer our prayers and move in your power and your might? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.